Hello and welcome back dear viewers. If you've watched my last video on the Dubfire MS404, you already know that it's a pretty miserable 303 clone, but a great mono synth. While working on the video, I took a look at the service manual, which made me realize that the 404's design lends itself very well for mods, because it was designed with moddability in mind from the very onset, and of course, because Mr. Dubfire himself even was kind enough to suggest some mods himself in the service manual. I've dabbled a bit on modding on my channel before, but the drive swap on my Casio FZ1 I've documented in RS30 was a pretty simple affair. It didn't even require any soldering whatsoever. I've always wanted to get a bit more serious about modding a synth. So let's do that now, by pimping my MS404. Let me just, at this point, make sure that you understand that I really don't deeply know what I'm actually doing here. Most of it is based on knowledge based on YouTube tutorials and trial and error. So I will take absolutely no responsibility when you fry your machine following my instructions. They work for me, but they might not for you. There will be two basic kinds of mods I will be performing on my machine. The first kind of mod being especially easy to realize. Also, I will talk about the third kind of mod I will not perform on my machine, but that might be interesting for some of you guys out there who are into modular equipment. So, to understand why the first type of mod is actually super easy to do, you will have to understand that the MS404 was designed with lots of internal jumpers that we can directly tap into. The LFOs can be toggled between triangle and square with jumpers 3 and 4, and there is another jumper, number 10, that enables node velocity to have an effect on the filter as well. Instead of having to open the machine and set the jumpers by hand, what I will do is tap into these by wiring toggle switches to the pins of the jumpers. This way, I can toggle between these settings on the fly. Not the most useful of all mods, but certainly one of the easiest. The hardest part here is that I actually have to drill holes for the switches into the front plate. But as there is more than enough space left on the front plate above the switches that toggle LFO speed, I'll even have the LFO toggle located at a spot that makes sense for this kind of switch. Likewise, I will locate the third switch above the filter tracking switch in the VCF section. Let's listen to how these mods affect the 404 sound, starting with the LFO waveform toggle. And now, let's have an actual look and listen at how node velocity can affect the filter as well. Thank you. 
The idea for the second mod derived from the fact that my MB33 has an opto mix between saw and square wave, which is a pretty neat feature in my opinion, as it conveniently allows for a unique sound. Realizing this on the 404 isn't even very difficult, as you have to understand that the 404 is designed in a way that saw and square waves are actually both generated no matter what position you set the waveform switch to. All the waveform select switch does is to toggle a signal path between the saw and the square wave outputs, disabling both outputs in the middle position. So if we wire a potentiometer to the three pins of the switch in just the right order, the pod can be used to mix the incoming saw and square signals when the switch is set to neutral position. I've tried several pod values on my little breadboard and it seems that 250k should be perfect for the job. I'll also add another switch to be able to disable the VCO output like when the wave select switch is set to the middle position. The output of the pod goes to the middle pin of the switch. The outer pins go to the waveform switch's output and ground respectively. Here's a complete look at the wiring again. We'll tap into the sound square wave outputs from the lower and upper leads of the wave select switch. These are wired to the outer pins of the pod. The middle pin goes to the new switch and from there to the middle lead of the waveform switch. Turning the knob now blends between both waveforms, coming in from the outer pins and going out to the middle pin. Flipping the switch, whose other outer pin are fired to ground to avoid signals bleeding into the circuit in the off position, completely disables the VCO output. A second 250k potentiometer is used in a similar way to make it possible to mix some noise into the signal path of the VCO. This time I will tap into the switch that toggles between noise, VCO and an external in. I pick up the noise output here, before the 100k resistor, and connect it to one outer pin of the pod. The other outer pin is connected to ground, and the middle pin is wired to the switch's middle lead. I'll add a 220k resistor before I connect it back to the middle pin of the switch. This way, I can bleed just about the right amount of noise into the VCO signal, making it sounding a bit dirty and rough. This mod is actually based on a suggestion made by Mr. Dupfer himself in the service menu. The pods can be placed in positions that make sense from a user interface perspective. And because I got some extra tiny pods, they do even fit just fine. It's a bit fiddly to use, but both pods aren't usually tweaked very much while playing the synth, so that's okay for me. Again, let's listen to how these mods affect the 4-4 sound. The third kind of mod that I will not perform on my machine is actually making it modular. As I don't have any Eurorack modules to connect it to yet, there's a little sense for me to do this now. But you can actually add a ton of patch points to the 404. 
As the service menu tells you all the spots you can directly tap into to intercept and send CV voltages to control LFOs, the VCF and the VCA, as well as outputs of the VCO and the LFOs. Ideally, these could be placed in a breakout box. If I were to do so, I would get a blank 19-inch faceplate that I can mount over or under the 404 to run all the connectors there. So that's it for my first proper synth modding video. If you, other than me, actually have some proper knowledge about the wondrous world of electronics, let me know what you think about my mods and what mods you have already done yourself. Until then, see you soon with another synth.